Hi, it's Dorothy Guiney with Scrapbooking Quebec. In this video, I'm participating in Janet Fritz's monthly YouTube collaboration, Stretch the Sketch. In this series, we start with a 12 by 12 sketch and then we alter it. We either shrink it or we stretch it. In February, we're using a Sketches in Time sketch designed by Rochelle Spears. And you'll find links to all the other participants below. So when you're finished here, hop along to find out what the others are doing with this month's sketch. My plan is to stretch it into this five photo double page spread. Here's what I'm going to be using. I have material from the Simple Stories, Simple Vintage Winter Woods collection. But before jumping in, I want to have another look at the sketch. This one is going to be easy for me to stretch. That layered photo mat that you see in the middle, I'm going to expand it and stretch it across the two pages. I'm going to use the very same page design, only my canvas is going to be 24 by 12 instead of 12 by 12. So let me show you how I plan to do this. On my desk in advance, I prepared a frame style foundation page with six sheets of paper. I gutted four of them. There is a tutorial on my channel where I explain how to do that. So that will be listed and linked below. I have the sketch, of course, along with five photos and some of them I've already trimmed down into squares. This is my first time diving into this collection and I'm showing you I have the cover sheet here but I did select some papers from it. That's what I'm showing you right now. That wood grain is from the collection but the wood grain paper I used in my foundation page is actually from the Simple Stories Woods cardstock collection which is one of their base collections. Also in that handful of scraps there I showed you I had some vellum. Here are the stickers from this collection and in this tray I have a bunch of different embellishments from the collection so I'll dig into that later on. Now the first thing I'm going to do is start creating that layered photo mat. You see the sketch there in the top left corner. So I'm going to be cutting up a bunch of different papers and this is going to be a mat that spans across the two pages. I will put measurements for this on the screen a bit later on when I actually adhere them to the page. Now what I want to say here is that I have a plan. I'm not just cutting away without any plan at all. Often for Stretch the Sketch, I find it one of the more challenging videos for me to create. So for that reason, I usually create a page, a layout, and when I do that, I kind of figure out the design and figure out the measurements, basically get my head around how to stretch the sketch. And then I create another layout on YouTube. And these always end up looking completely different. But a lot of the thinking is done. Now for this one, I didn't do a practice page, but I did play with scrap paper in advance with the photos that I had available. And for that reason, I know what I'm doing here. I did come up with some measurements in advance. Now back to the layout. What you see me doing here is creating a banner with that wood grain paper. So those strips of paper are four inches wide and what I'm doing is kind of folding it without really folding it. I'm not really making a crease, just a pinch. Then I'm taking my scissors and cutting at an angle towards the middle. I use the first one as a guide to do the second one so that the banners would be more or less identical. So I'm showing you I have most of my page parts and they're kind of divided up page left and page right. And now what I'm doing is applying a bit of ink to all of these paper pieces. So the ink I'm using is Morning Mist by Versifying Claire, which is kind of a gray and it's the ink I most often reach for when I ink up layered photo mats and layered borders and stuff like that. So I finished my inking. Now I'm going to place all of these page parts on the screen. I do want to mention I am missing one of the layers and I do that a little bit later on. But right now I'm kind of placing it on the page a little bit towards the top just like in the sketch because you can see in the sketch the title is at the bottom right so I want there to be space at the bottom. Now I'm going to work on that missing layer and that's why I have this vellum. So I have a bunch of scraps of vellum here. I'm going to cut them into some lengths and then you're going to see me tear them with a creative memories tearing tool. So basically this layer is basically going to be tucked behind that off-white paper the, that you see in the middle on that layered photo mat. So I'm going to have it peeking from the top of that off-white layer and peeking from the bottom of it. 
I like to use vellum on my snowy layouts. I find it just goes well with the theme. Also, this particular collection is very soft, pretty, and pastel. So vellum also tends to go well with soft and pretty colors as well. So there you see me tucking them at the top and the bottom. Nothing is adhered at this point, so it's all kind of falling all over the place. Anyway, what I want to do right now is place my photos on this photo mat to try to decide where to place them, number one. And I also want to select photo mats for these as well. So like I said, I have three square photos. I'll put measurements on the screen, but the squares are three and a quarter inches each. And the landscape photos are four and three quarters by three and a quarter inch. Now I could line up these square photos then put the landscape photos at the very end. You're going to see me try that out as an option. Or I could change the placement of those landscape photos a little bit towards the middle of the layout, which is what I end up doing. I like how it breaks up that row of photos. However, both are options. Both are correct. That's just the way I like it better. And then you're going to see me get out some different papers and audition the green paper and the wood grain paper, which are the papers that I got it from behind the foundation page. And I'm going to decide which I prefer for photo mats. I just want to talk about photos here for a moment because when I'm looking at a sketch, typically I'm looking at the bones of the sketch. And in this case, it would be the layered photo mat, the placement of the title and journaling and all of that and not actually the photos. The sketch itself, I could have put two photos there or one bigger photo there. I could put whatever I want because when the bones of the layout is pleasing and well balanced, typically I find you can place whatever you want on the layout. And that is particularly true when the sketch is a sketch with a layered photo mat. I find them extremely adaptable. Anyway, Back to what I'm doing here. You can see I've matted my photos. I ended up going with the wood grain and now I'm kind of playing around with placement. I just want to make sure I have enough room for that title, which comes from the chipboard collection from this Winter Woods collection. And I also know I want two main embellishment clusters in the bottom left and top right, like you see on the sketch. So what I'm going to do right now, because I know where my title's going to go, I'm going to move ahead and just adhere all of these page parts to the foundation page. When I have a layered photo mat like this that spans across the two pages, what I like to do is adhere it to one page first completely. That's what I'm doing right now on the right. Then what I'm going to do is adhere these two foundation pages together. That is mint tape from the scrapbook.com. It's kind of a low tack tape, so it won't rip your page when you lift it up. And I adhere them together because now I have a guide where to place the page parts on the left hand page. So it's much, much easier. So now I'm just continuing adhering all of these pieces. I'm not going to make you watch this. I just wanted to make sure you saw the process how I did this. I also adhered my photos to that layered photo map. Now I've got to start the embellishment process and I want to start by cutting out some circles and tags. You can see on the sketch there's a circle in the bottom left and a tag in the top right. Well what I'm going to do is have circles in both embellishment clusters and tags in both embellishment clusters and that simply reflects my style. When I create embellishment clusters, I like to use repetition. So I'm going to have both of those elements in different sizes and numbers in both of those clusters. So the dies I'm using, the circles are older nesting circle dies from Stampin' Up! and I cut myself out two circles in the wood grain. Not full circles, but they're going to be tucked under so I'm not worried about that. I only had a little scrap of paper and now I'm cutting out a tag. So I end up cutting out three tags. This tag set as well also has reinforcer dies, so I'm going to cut out some of those as well. Those tags are newer. They came out last fall from Elizabeth Craft Designs. So I'm cutting out some more. I will cut out some more, I should say, off camera in a moment. I cut some out in graph paper because that's actually going to be 
where I do my journaling. So now I'm showing you all of my embellishing. So I have a couple circles there or partial circles and I have three tags along with all of my other embellishing which is all from this Winter Woods collection. So I have that sticker sheet there, I have ephemera, I have chipboard, and I also have self-adhesive brads. Basically I haven't dive, I haven't dove into this project yet so I have a lot of stuff. I typically find the first layout I make with the collection a little bit overwhelming. I don't know if it's because of the choice or because I'm not familiar with the collection yet. Anyway, that's kind of what I'm feeling right now. So I also showed you there over on the right, I have some foam adhesive, wax paper, extra cardstock. That's all kind of stuff I like to have handy when I embellish. So I started by tucking a circle in each one of those embellishment clusters. Again, I like to use repetition when I create embellishment clusters and now I'm tucking in tags so one at the bottom two at the top on the right and I'm right now actually adding a little bit of ink to those wood grain circles so just so that they will match all of the other layered pieces on this layout. You can see at the bottom right there I placed my title and now I'm once again going back and forth to these embellishment clusters, adding at this point some ephemera pieces. So these ephemera pieces have snowflakes, birds, branches. They're really, really pretty. So that's basically what I'm incorporating in both of these embellishment clusters. And I am using the layers here. I'm tucking some behind the circles, some in front, some behind the tags, some behind the vellum. Again, working with the layers, which does add interest to these embellishment clusters. Also what adds interest here is the layering. So I start with the bigger pieces and finish with the smaller pieces. In both of these embellishment clusters as well, I put a little bit of chipboard. I have these little round circles. The one in the top says snowfall or something. And the one in the bottom, it's like, I don't know, it's burr or freezing. I don't have it in front of me right now and it's too small on the screen to read. You can also see I have a sticker down by the title there. There's a heart sticker that came from the sticker sheet. That's because that I'm considering it a cluster, but it's all that wood grain color, which is pretty, but I wanted to incorporate another color there. So now I have moved on to the adhering part. So I adhered the title already. Now I'm adhering that cluster in the top right. I'm leaving the cluster in the bottom left at this point to the end because I'm not happy with it. The problem with the cluster in the bottom left is the placement. When I put my embellishments in that cluster, I am completely covering up the circle. And I'm aware of that, but I'm not quite sure what to do with it. Sometimes when I'm not quite sure what to do with it, I think if I move ahead and continue adhering, the problem will magically solve itself. But in this case, sometimes it does, but in this case, it doesn't. So I adhere the circle down, I adhere the tag on top of it, and then I'm moving forward with these ephemera pieces, but it's covering the circle. So I'm thinking to myself, what's the point? Why do I have a circle here if I'm going to completely cover it up? Finally, what I end up doing is I end up moving the circle and the tag. So the circle is going to be more towards the middle and the tag on the outside. And that def definitely solves my problem. So what I do is I create that cluster. It kind of overlaps the tag, but I still see the tag and I still see the circle. So I'm happy with that. I want three snowflakes in that cluster and I do have a little bit of problem with regards to where to place those snowflakes. So I'm putting them on the circle but for whatever reason it's not feeling right to me. At one point my phone rings so I'm taking a forced break here. You're going to see my camera stops after I adhere all of this. And another thing I want to point out, both of the embellishment clusters top right and bottom left, the little round chipboard pieces, I pop those up with foam adhesive. Anyway, my camera stops here and when I come back I end up deciding to take those snowflakes that I didn't know what to do with and put them on the other side of the tag. So you can see I'm just kind of adding them in that cluster there and oddly enough in the end you're going to see they get moved around a little bit as well. 
I have a few finishing touches here. Mostly what I have to do is add some twine to those tags. So I'm getting out some twine. It's white with little silver flecks in it. So I tie myself three little bows here. And what I end up doing, I don't do it on camera, is I simply adhere them to the reinforcers of each one of those three tags with a little glue dot. That's it. So I'm just making the bows right there. So basically what you're about to see in a moment is my completed layout. And off camera, I added my journaling and I added a bit more decorations to the two embellishment clusters. The one in the bottom left, I moved those snowflakes again and I added two self-adhesive brads. And in the top right, I added another self-adhesive brad and a bird. So just to review here, to stretch this single page sketch into a double page spread, I simply stretch the layered photo mat across the two pages, turning the 12 by 12 canvas into a 24 by 12. That's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I'd greatly appreciate a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I would be thrilled if you did. And if you are a subscriber, thank you very much. Don't forget to check out the other participants. Their links are listed below. Have a great day, and I'll see you soon on YouTube. Bye-bye.